In this episode, I discuss sales with the master, Mr. Grant Cardone. Have you gone months where you didn't tell your staff? Yes. America was built on small business, and many are in trouble today. Look, I don't care when it comes to a politician or employee. I just want to know, what are you going to do? Can you make change? Do you have hustle? Do you have good ideas? To me, age doesn't matter. It's like, what are you bringing to the table right here, right now? I need everybody to know me. I'm not trying to be the most popular person. Your job is not to get people to like you. Your job is to get people to buy from you. And if I got to move from here to there to get freedom, if I got to go over here to get a job, man, to take care of my family, I'm willing to do that. More is condemned by those that have given up on more. Okay, so if you had a financial goal of a million dollars, the 10x rule would say, no, 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 no. We're going to go for 10 million, not 1 million. And if we come up short on 1 million or 10 million, which one you want to come up short on? Look, if you want to get rich, you want to be really successful, you must learn to dominate. Your job is not to get people to like you. Your job is to get people to buy from you. What does success mean to you? You should not be selling this product if you're not willing to say, let's do it anyway. Let's do it. Let's do this, man. If you own a gym or you need a gym, this is your guy. My name's Mike, and I help fitness studios that are ready to take action, work hard, and grow their studios. In this very saturated industry, there's tons of competition, but the opportunities are incredible. We'll cover the most common challenges in the fitness world and invite guests in the show that have learned to overcome them and share their strategies with you. This is the GSD Show. This podcast is sponsored by Causely. Causely helps fitness businesses get new members while giving back. We've partnered with Causely to give back to kids in need with this podcast. And here's how you can get involved. Each time you review this podcast on iTunes or share the episode post on Facebook, a meal will be provided to a child in need. It's that easy. Everyday actions can make a difference. Thank you for helping us give back. And to learn more about how Causely can help you grow your business, visit Causely.com. Again, that's Causely, spelled C-A-U-S-E-L-Y.com. What's up, everybody? I'm Mike Garcy. Welcome back to another episode of the GSD Show. And today, I am here with the man, Mr. Grant Cardone. Thanks, thanks for coming What's over. What's up, man? man? So I'm here at your house right now yep, yep. in Malibu. Yep. And you rent it for the month. That's right. So tell me why you're here for the month. We came here. Man, there's a lot of reasons we came here. I got about 300 million reasons that I came here. Maybe more than that. Maybe a billion reasons, actually. Right, Captain Ryan? <laughs> so... Uh, I mean, I came here to, to finish an agenda I have on a sales workshop I'm doing in July. So it's a, a, a three-day workshop we're creating the curriculum for. So this was a place where I could come and create that. I'm also working on some um, real estate deals, some very okay. big real estate deals. They require uh, a fund. We're creating a fund, a $40 million fund. And then after that fund's completed, we're going to create a $100 million fund. Right. And we think we'll fill them both this year. That's amazing, man. And, and you, the third, the third, man, I'm not done, man. Oh, you got, yeah, a lot more. Man, I never go anywhere <laughs> for a couple, just a couple of reasons. I said I came for a billion Well, reasons. we got a billion, so we got so, so, And I'm talking, when I say a billion reasons, every one of them's got a dollar behind it. So uh, the third reason we came down here was um, there's some TV stuff going going on that we're, we're, we're looking at doing, so. Okay, can we talk about that? Sure, sure, we can talk about it. So let's talk about it. Yeah, so, you know, just there, there's, some, there's some business show stuff that, I came down and met with Damon John, went and visited the people at Shark Tank. Okay. Um, had a couple calls with people at A and E doing some stuff and, and uh, some other fun stuff. So are we looking at a show similar to like The Prophet but Cardone style? Oh, it would have to be Cardone style. It's of course. You know, I mean, that's the only style I have. So I uh, somebody said the other day, say, man, told told my wife Elena at, at her birthday party. She's like, that guy, that guy, kind of like. He just says whatever's on his mind, doesn't he? And I, well, I said that's that's I don't have any style. I'm just being me. Right. Now, when when I first heard of you yeah. so a few years ago, um, didn't know who you were, but I knew you can sell because that was like the I, I, first. I, oh, that's what somebody told you? No, that's what I saw in the video. Oh, oh you just okay. see it. You can see oh, yeah? it. You you know how to you know how to ask the right questions. And it was actually a call. You jumped on a phone call. Oh yeah, well you saw the right video. A cold call. Sales guy. <laughs> yeah. Were you searching cold uh, calling? I was searching cold call systems, cold call yeah. processes, and I saw you pick up, uh, actually take the phone from somebody else and yeah, just yeah. kind of go in and get yeah, the guy to yeah, sign yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. And then from there, you just blew up. You were everywhere. 
And uh, obviously, there's plenty well, I of didn't, I didn't blow up then. I just, you just found me. I found you. You know, it's like, but it's like going out and buying a car. You, ever, you bought a car before, right? Sure. And you buy a car, you're looking at one, and then the next thing you know, you see them everywhere. Right. You know, it's the awareness of the mind once you take ownership of something. And you must have taken ownership of the cold call or sales calls. Now I now saw you. Now you see sales everywhere. Yeah, and, and that's the thing too. I remember when I first started really paying attention to you, one of the things that you mentioned in, in one of the books I read um, was you want, when somebody thinks about sales training, you want yeah. them to think about you, right? I want to think Crank Cardone. Yeah. And then I just started, every, everything I did, I saw sales training, I saw this, yeah. you know, and I asked people, hey, who, who's the best sales trainer out there, sales coach? Everyone was saying Grant Cardone. He's well, the dude, guy to follow. I, it's true. Follow. I mean, I am the best. There is, okay. Without a doubt, I'm like, I'm like the Floyd Mayweather of, of sales training. I'm the, I'm the McGregor of sales. I mean, I know more about sales the sales cycle. I'm not saying this to brag. I just, you know, your strengths. I invested the time, you know? So if you ask me, Hey Grant, what do you know about Bitcoin? Dude? I, I mean, I really don't know anything about cryptocurrencies. I'm, I'm learning, but I'm going to go to somebody else. You ask me about sales. I know every, not everything there is to know about sales, but I understand the intricacies. When we negotiated this house, I told my wife did the deal. I told her what would happen on every part of the cycle. Before the first phone call, I told her what would happen on the second call, the third call, the fourth call, and the fifth call. I told her where the people would get upset, what they would agree to, where they would come back, when it unwinded, how to put it back together. I mean, everything. And you so, got it nailed down? So, and, and, and oh, I'm here. <laughs> Are we here? <laughs> so, so, on our terms, by the way. Right. And, um, and that is the importance of sales. It's not to sell a car or something online or to hawk a pair of socks you know it's to get what you want in life man I, I'm, I'm living for 30 days in a house this the guy wants 20 million for this place he rents it he wants a hundred what do you want for this house 125,000 a week or something hundred thousand a week and you know I negotiated a deal that that I thought was good for me and good for him um, he didn't know me I didn't know him he owns mankind jeans Okay, wow. So it's a good connection. Yeah. So, and, and back to the phone call, you know, you, you, you were looking for, hey, how do, I, how do I call people I need to call? It right. tells me a lot about you because you don't want to wait. You want to go get the business, right? Mm -hmm. And you saw me as a business owner, I own five companies, jump on a guy's call. Right. Sales guy was doing a phone call. It went bad. I knew, I could tell from my office. Just I could hearing hear the one side of it. I could hear it from down the hall. Right. Okay. And I come down the hall. I think I was leaving that day. Yeah. I'm walking out and I can tell, I'm, I'm, I'm percept, I own my business. I own it. I have ownership, right? And I can tell this call is not going right. And I intervened on it. And that's what more business owners need to do. They need to be sales revenue, not CEOs. <laughs> What's up everybody and happy 4th of July to those of you that are watching this live. Today as you can see I'm here with Mr. Grant Cardone and he's giving away his awesome millionaire booklet, How to Get Super Rich. He's given a bunch of these away. All you have to do is go to thegsdshow.com forward slash E062. Again that's thegsdshow.com forward slash E062. Grab your copy and enjoy your holiday. You know, and that's one of the things too, I, I, I've noticed a, a big part of it, and I want your take on it, is a lot of business owners, they feel like if I, if I have a really great product, or if I have a really great service, then people will come to me, and people will buy, and they'll pay handsomely for yeah. it. And then a lot of people think that they're great at sales, because maybe their aunt told them, they're, oh, you got the gift of gab, yeah, you're such yeah. a good talker, but there's no, like LeBron naturally gifted, but he also got a lot of skill development around that natural raw talent. Yeah. I think a lot of these guys never read sales books, hire sales coaches, go to sales courses or trainings. They just kind of ride on that gift. And that's the difference between yeah. you and them. And that's yeah. probably one of the things that got you so well, good. Well, the gift of gab won't, won't make you a businessman. It won't make you a millionaire. I know a lot of great salespeople that don't have any money. Right. And that doesn't sound like greatness to me. Right. So, uh, you know, LeBron, you know, you brought up LeBron. LeBron knows every part of the game. He doesn't just know how to dunk. He doesn't know how. He doesn't just know how to assist. He knows how to work a deal. 
He right. manages his own brand, dude. He kicked out his agent. And, and when he's in business, it, 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 it's like he's working his deals. Right. Because he's working his brand, his career, you know. So, <clears throat> look, it, pe people need to take ownership of the whole game. Not just when you're on the court, but when you're at home, when you're going on a trip. Like, what is your brand? You're like, you found me because I decided to go wide. You know, you found me when you looked up sales, boom, you probably went to YouTube, searched something about cold calling. I popped. Then you hit me. You, I probably wasn't the only guy. No. There was probably a, that many videos on page one. Yeah. And something about my delivery. I, I watched like 10 of your videos right after that. Right. Nobody, you know, the old Lay's potato chips, you yeah. can't just eat one. Yeah. <laughs> you can't watch this one of my videos. No. So, so we, we know how to grab people's attention with that. And by the way, the content, because there's a lot of guys online that can get attention, but then when you go to their store, there's no products there. Right. And, and for everybody watching, like, you need to understand that the depth of products that somebody can deliver to you, like Apple, okay? Apple's a great company because it delivers lots of products, okay? It, it saturates a client. Man, I can't believe. Can you get? Can you even hear it's me beautiful. over this ocean? Oh yeah, we can hear you, dude. It is banging so hard. It sounds like, great. Is, is that good? Oh yeah. That's that's a hundred grand, man, <laughs> right there. I think they give this place away at a hundred grand a week, frankly. So uh, you got to have a depth of products to be able to help a customer because you might have come and looked at what we're doing with real estate rather than cold calling. I want you to find me at a lot of different front mm -hmm. doors. Yeah. And it, I, I knew you weren't selling what I was selling, yeah. but you were, you, were, you were asking questions that regardless of what you're selling, you were finding out why the person wanted, why, why they were on the phone call in the first place. Right, I think right. that was one of the questions. Right. Like, look, you call for a reason. Why are, we, why are we on the call? Yeah, or you took my call for a reason. You took my call for a reason, right? Yeah. And I think a lot of people get away from that. They yeah, start yeah. answering questions that are irrelevant to the main reason they're right, here. Right, right. Because a lot of people just ask questions, customers, potential customers, just ask questions just to kind of feel like they're getting information because they yeah. don't want to be sold. Yeah, yeah. And I think people fall into that and then they let that lead navigate the entire Yeah, well, sales control process. equals income and whoever controls the sales cycle ends up with the income. So if the customer controls the cycle, um, there won't be a close. Yeah, unless they Th that want That money's to, gonna go some other place. Right. So wherever that cycle is controlled is where the income falls. So. You're talking to a business owner, and this business owner, let's say, never really invested that time into sales, yeah. right? But they, they, now they get it. They're, they're at this point in the video, and they're like, okay, I get it. Maybe I need to learn sales a little bit more. How much time do you think they should invest in sales education, sales training, every single month or week? I think every day. Every day? Just reading books and you know, hiring coaches? When you got here, what was I doing? Yeah, you, you were running. I was working out, man. Yep. What am I going to do? do? Do that once a week? Nope. Nothing happens. So anything worth doing is worth doing every day. If it's important to you, you'll do it every day. You piss every day, you eat every day, you breathe every day, you probably love your kids every day. Dude, you might, you might, wanna, you might wanna sharpen your freaking sales game every day if it's important to you. If it's not important to you. Right. And by the way, if you hadn't made it important, I guarantee you got a revenue problem. Yeah. Okay, sales is the top line of every financial statement in every language, every business, every industry, the top line is revenue. Fancy yeah. word for sales. In your book, Be Obsessed or Be Average, you actually said sales is like the god of any business. It is, it is the holy grail, dude. So without income, the business fails. So that income could be a product sold, it could be investors, it could be capital coming in. Businesses fail because products weren't sold in quantities uh, 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 with margins big enough and in quantities great enough to sustain, sustain that business. Businesses don't, are not undercapitalized going in. They're, they don't sell their products fast enough. Well, why do you think people don't focus on sales as much as they do other parts of their business? Like the marketing, they always want to learn they, more of the marketing. People focus on the things they know how to do. You know, So you, if you've got a business owner that, that, that he's highly critical you know, you know Kanye West, yeah. the song Douchebag, was, is that the name of the song? <laughs> I don't know Run the song. Huh? Run away. It's called Runaway, right? <laughs> you're talking about, you're such a douchebag. You know, you're critical about everything, every woman he's with. He, you know, he, he, he can never be satisfied. You know business owners like that. Yep. Everything's wrong with every person, every department. They come in, they don't really know how to run the business. They don't know how to fix the business. They don't know how to grow the business, but they know how to criticize everything. 
That's because that guy doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. Like, show me what to do to fix one thing. By the way, if my revenue is going straight up, all this other stuff, n- nobody should see. Because sales cures all. My friend Mark Cuban says, sales cure, cure all things. On Shark Tank, every in every show and in every interview, when they're talking to a guy or a gal or an entrepreneur, they're coming down to that question. Yeah, where are your sales? What are your sales? They never say what's your net. Yeah. So why people don't spend time in it is because they're not good at it. You know, why don't people work out? They're not good at it. Why don't people, uh, uh, you know, why, 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 don't pe- why, why does Grant Cardone not skate? I'm not good at it, man. You can't skate? I, I don't know anything about it. So, <laughs> like, if you talk to me about skating, I'm a, I, there's not going to be, like, now you say, hey, let's play, uh, before you leave, let's play some uh, Hold'em Poker. I'll be like, you know what, I have time for that. Yeah. We, we might be able to squeeze 10 minutes in, right, Max? I might play a little bit. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so people do the things they're good at, and the things that you're not doing, that is by itself an admission that you're no good at it. And this is choice because totally, I was no good at sales. Uh, the first for, and you didn't like it. No, I not only was I not good at it, I hated it, like despised it. Why'd like, you hate it? Because I was no good at it. Is it? They're they're wrapped up together, man. People, anything you're good at, you'll like. There's nothing. Nobody's ever gonna say. Oh, uh, man, I hate singing, but I'm great at it. Like, like I was on The Voice and I won and I hate it. I, I don't, I've never heard that kind of contradiction, right? So people don't like things they fail at over and over for a reason. Why, why would you? Right. So I didn't like sales for a lot of reasons, one of which I wasn't any good. Two, I wasn't trained. I wasn't educated. And third, a lot of people told me bad things about sales. Or well, kind of trained that way growing up. Yeah. Like... You know, I went to college, got out of college, five years of accounting degree, and I got to take a sales job. It, it seemed demeaning to me based on what other people had told me, right? So, um, but when I made a commitment to it and started learning it, how to ask a question, how to ask hard questions, how to control a sale, how to use transparency to, great, to gain authenticity, uh, how, how, to fi- how to start studying personality types, you know, and how to, how to figure out uh, what product somebody really needed, mm-hmm. what, what, what problem they were really trying to solve. Uh, once I understood that I wasn't a guy that liked tricks or manipulation and that I could use authenticity and straight talk with a guy or a gal, when I could tell somebody, look, you can't afford this product, let me show you one you can. Right. You know, when I could use that and, and learn how to use, sell in volumes, like a lot, big volumes, because I get the action and the activity, I fell in love with sales. Uh, how did that switch go from you not liking it or being good at it to saying, I'm committing to this? What was the thing that made you well, say, did somebody tell you, you need to get great at sales? Dude, or? dude, I had a guy, every day I've been here, I've had like three to five coaching sessions okay. where people come here and br- they bring some situation. And I had a guy here yesterday and I'm like, bud, he works for himself for the last seven or eight years. I said, son, you, uh, you, you, bro, you, you, my brother, you need to go get a job in sales, okay? Drop the entrepreneur thing. You need to go somewhere where there's a product to be sold that can be delivered today that you can make money on. And, and, and so for me, when I made the decision to embrace the thing I didn't like or didn't want to do, it's because I didn't have any choices. This guy doesn't have any choices, okay? He still is hanging on to like, he's got choices. He's probably not gonna even make the turn. First person I've met in the whole month I've been here, I told him, I said, hey, you're the only guy walking out of here that I'm worried about. Everybody's walking out of here, they're gonna 10X, 20X, 30X. You're walking out of here, and I'm pretty confident you're going to zero. Really? Yeah, because he won't, he's not ready. The pain's not great enough for him to say, I'm gonna do whatever it takes. It's still kind of good. He's still in a good place. He's still making sense, like he's not, He's reading, he's studying, he goes to Jay, he goes to Tony, he comes to Grant. He's learning, collecting data, and he doesn't know anything because he won't commit to one thing. Yeah. Now, another thing that you committed to, which is incredible, and I think this is a pain point for a lot of people, you, you have blown up on social media, blown up. Facebook, you're everywhere. Like every day there's a whole nother video 
that's great content too, well produced. Yeah. And then you have Twitter. I, I think somewhere I read that you had like the fastest growing Twitter following in like a certain amount of time. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it, it was incredible. I, I'd love to see that article. Yeah. I didn't read that. Instagram, YouTube, you have subscribers everywhere. But you, you didn't start using social media until you were in your like early fifties, right? Yeah, it was uh, I guess maybe five, six, six years ago. You know, five or six years ago. Yeah. And we, now we started with YouTube. I started in YouTube. I was living, I was living up the street actually in, in Los Angeles, and I guess it was 2008 or 2009. And in nine years, we dropped 4,000 videos on YouTube. Sam thinks he cuts a lot of video. <laughs> Sometimes we drop eight videos on YouTube in a day. So, Aww. so to do that though, you know, at some point to drop that much content, you, you have to know something. Right. Cause you can't just keep dropping videos of Lambos. Right. Right. I mean, you, at some point it's like, you know, so what we did, the way to do that. Okay. And this goes back to an inventory problem for most business owners, whether you own a gym or you have a franchise, Look at Subway, man. Subway's got a lot of product. A lot of choices in that product lineup. I went and went ate a towel last night. Lots of product in that lineup. Everything from martinis to uh, desserts. Big product lineup that they can move. Starbucks, you brought me a Starbucks over here. Big lineup of products, right. right? Most entrepreneurs, business owners, franchises, if you're gonna be successful, you have to have a big product lineup. So what I did, YouTube basically helped me start figuring out in 2009, what can I talk about to go omnipresent? What's omnipresent? Omnipresence is the concept. Omnipresence is associated with gods, okay? A God, God is omnipresent, right. no, no matter what God you believe in, okay? So all religions would believe God is everywhere. It's in every biblical reference from the Christians to the Muslims to you name them. Right. God is everywhere. Omnipresence is the concept of everywhere. Right. Every, anything assigned the concept, oh, what's up, bruh? What's up, my little man? Hey, <laughs> that'd be 50 bucks. That'd be 50, 50 bucks. 50 bucks to stay there for five minutes? Okay, that'd be 50 bucks. Okay. <laughs> my man. So, uh, omnipresent. Omnipresence is the concept of being everywhere. Okay. Anything that is assigned or associated with omnipresence is all powerful. So, so uh, I study a lot of stuff, right? So I'm interested in knowing, not learning. And so when I look a word up, I didn't know what that word meant. I looked the word up and I started looking up, man. God references everywhere, concepts of power. You know, I go back and look at what it meant 700 years ago. I'm, I'm like, I'm interested in this, man. What's this? So I'm like, how do I become omnipresent? Omnipresent, right? So I'm like, how do I do that? Nobody knows me. Right. I'm a one person of seven billion. What would it mean to be omnipresent? Well, all seven billion people would know me. Right. Right. Okay. How do I do that? Is it possible? Uh, no, it's probably not possible. Okay. But what would I have to do if it were possible? Right. This is what I'm playing out in my head. Right. So I'm like, I don't have the money to do it. It's 2009. The world's coming to an end. Going wide is definitely very important at this point right. in my career because all my businesses have been freaking crushed. Uh, I'm completely disappointed with myself. I'm, I'm highly successful at this point. I have a niche business that's making millions of dollars a year and has been for years. And I'm, I'm, I'm at risk. In 2009, my real estate business got frozen. Uh, the bank that I owed money to owed $40 million to one bank. They, got, they, they went under. Right. All my buddies lost everything, okay? We were just having a baby. My, my first two businesses were cut in half. And I'm like, I'm sitting in my house. I can remember where I am right now. I'm like, dude, I have really let everybody down because I didn't go wide. I didn't go around the globe, right? Because if you go around the globe, man, if you get cut in half again, at least you got half the globe. Yeah. So to make a long story about the omnipresence, but it's really important, right? So I started looking for channels that wouldn't cost me anything, distribution lines that wouldn't cost me anything. Oh, YouTube. Then the problem is this, and you could just add to that YouTube, Facebook, Snapchat, right? But what, <coughs> what, what are you going to lay on that line, right? What, what am I going to lay? So I basically took a, a whiteboard. This, I did this by myself, put my picture in the middle and said, what can I talk about? Because the one thing I will not do is I will not talk about something I don't know. 
I'm just going to tell you, I don't know. But if I know about something, no, then I'm going to know, like, I'm a billionaire in the making. I, I know how to make people millionaires, even hectic millionaires. I don't know how to make somebody a billionaire. <coughs> so, but, but when I score it, I'll be, I'll be journaling along the way what I did that worked and what didn't. And when I become a billionaire, I'll be able to tell people, dude, this is the track. Right. So I started put, putting together a list of things that I could do well, sales, find the right chick. You know, I got a wife that didn't want to go out with me. Um, how to find time for the kids, how to get through the Great Recession, how to handle a $60 million lawsuit, ha how to handle three IRS audits. I just started wrapping all this stuff that I've done, how to handle a drug addiction, uh, how to handle a brother and a dad dying, uh, how to build a business, start a business, how to start a YouTube channel. So th those were things that I was, I write about, right? And that's what I started, the content I started dropping on those lines. Uh, so that a guy like you could one day, eight or nine years later, <coughs> run into me. That video that you saw was shot four or five right. years ago. Okay? So you're watching a video that was put up five years ago that finally got your attention so that me and you are sitting here today with the seagull. Our friend. The freeloader, dude. The freeloader. He's that gone was now. a freaking government, government sponsored seagull. He's right gone there. now. Once he found out what the rent was. <laughs> He took off. He took his four and left. Hey, real quick, Sam, can you just pass me my drink right there? The air change is definitely getting me. Here we go. Thank you. Life, life was definitely much different for you at the age of 20, 30, yeah. 40. Yeah. I mean, every decade had different layers to yeah. it. Yeah. Just so people can see, like, it's not Grant Cardone born this way and literally everything he touched turned to gold from the moment he oh, walked the earth, right? Yeah. So... What was your life like at 20, 30, 40? Yeah. Like, what were your layers? Well, 15 to 25, I was a drug addict. I was using drugs every day. And, and by, you know, the drugs, the drugs were just part of the problem, right? Like, a guy says he's a drug addict or a girl says she's a drug addict. Everybody's like, oh, wow, that's a shame. I'm sorry you had to go through that. But you don't even understand all the other stuff that goes with that scene. It's freaking terrible. What, what stuff? I mean, dude, like everything, everything degrading that, that goes with being under the influence constantly, the, the lack of self-esteem, the destruction of anything left, uh, any chance of having family, like uh, repeatedly waking up in the morning saying, every drug addict does this, by the way, I'm not going to use today. I'm going to quit again. I'm going to quit today. Five minutes later, use it again. Like, the total sense of like, not one loss or two losses, hundreds of thousands, you know? So, what got you family's to disappointed with you, dude. You're disappointed with yourself. I mean, you're the black sheep, car wrecks. I mean, everything, right? Firings, just total de degradation. So that was 15 to 25. Uh, went to a treatment center when I was 25. I was broke, had no money. What made you finally make that choice? Uh, my mom actually finally said, hey, don't come back here. I'm done. So she, the, the great gift my mom gave me was not trying to fix me anymore and said, hey, done, I'm done. And uh, went to the treatment center, left there. They said I wouldn't make it. Uh, told me to give up all my ideas of writing books, uh, of being an, a speaker of being uh, rich. I've always wanted to be rich. I always wanted to have a hot chick. You know, I always wanted to have a beautiful family. And, and I'm leaving the guys like, if you, if you hang on to any of those grandiose ideas, um, you're not going to make it. Be satisfied if you just go 24 hours without using drugs. Mm -hmm. And I left there and I said, dude, ain't no way that's all I'm going to be satisfied with. You know, I'd almost rather be dead. Right. So I went back. Uh, my big, my big, my big fear was time, free time. And you know, when you quit using drugs, you got a lot of free time, or new time. Right. And so what I did was I, I said, what can I throw myself into completely, where I won't have any free time? And I threw myself into two things. I'm going to learn how to sell, and I'm going to help people. That's all I did. I slept maybe six hours a day, and the only other two things I did for 18 hours a day was I either studying sales or I was helping some drug addict. 
where would you study? What, what, what material? What well, people? there was there was a, I bought a set of uh, uh, a video set by a guy that was doing automotive sales. I was in the automobile industry at the time, and it was the three thousand dollars set of videos. It was twelve big video sets. I mean, literally, the, you, you carried them around with you like this. Right. right? You probably don't even remember that. Yeah. No. So, <laughs> um, I watched them every day. It's the only thing I studied. Contrary to the way people study on the internet today, they read. They read Gary, they read Tony, they read Grant, they read Bob, they read Les, they read this. Right. You guys are studying too much stuff and learning nothing. Right. You don't know anything. You're getting conflicting information. People are watching me about real estate and then they go watch Dave Ramsey. All you're gonna do is end up in a conflict. So what I did was I studied one guy deep over and over and over. Like I watched those videos not five or 10 times, not a hundred times, thousands of times. Wow. Until I knew his reflection, when he would blink, when he would smile, how he would respond, when he would laugh. The timing. Dude, I knew everything. I, 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 knew, I knew the guy. I knew the information so well. Knew it, know it, right? That, 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 that I felt like I had become that dude to where I was even worried about it a little bit. Like I'm like, man, I'm starting to sound like that guy. Right. And I said, just stay with it, just stay with it. Because your own personality is so strong. If you, can, if, you, if, you, if you can put the ego aside long enough and stay with it, okay, you're going to literally adopt the personality of the person you're learning from for a second. You're going to start picking up a lot of those nuances. And then what's going to happen is you're going to come back on the scene full force right. and you're going to adopt both of those powers. You, you, the original, is more powerful you're than... You're creating something new. Oh, you're creating something really new, but with, with, with something proven. Right. I've noticed that, too, with coaches and mentors I've had for, like, a year. And yeah. I start talking like them, especially in certain scenarios where yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. saying, how would he handle this? Yeah. You know, yeah. how would they yeah. handle this? Yeah, even, even like, like, you've probably felt it before. Like, if you're studying somebody, you say something, you get this feeling like, oh, God, that felt like Chris, right? Well, this, even a smirk. Like yeah, a, yeah, yeah, I did it. I did it, right? <laughs> right. So, so I would, you know, all I would tell people, like, what I know worked for me and what I know has worked for other people is you study deep not why, you know? Get good at one thing. I, and, and when I was 25 years old, I wasn't trying to, I wasn't learning about real estate. I wasn't learning about social media. Wasn't around. Uh, I was learning how to do one simple thing, repeatedly, okay? I don't think I've ever said this in an interview, but it's it, like the one thing that I would give myself credit for probably, I don't know, a bunch of my net worth, I repeat things. I do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. I don't... Until it's like muscle memory. Dude, it's like, like, like if you ever roll with me for one day, you'll see me handle three and four things at a time and you'll be like, I don't know how anybody does that. I, I could handle a $90 million deal, okay? Jump off to a sales call that's for 80 grand. Um, and post something on Instagram, like, like to me, they're not different activities, mm -hmm. you know? And I hear guys my age say, I don't have time for social media. Well, number one, you don't understand the, the value of it. Number two, you don't know what you're doing. Tell me about the value of it, like your perception of it. for Because you know there's people watching right now yeah. that don't see it the way you see it. I would, I'd probably bet that 80% Because you're no good at it. Again, you don't do things you're no good at, man, you know? We had a baby. I was scared to hold the baby. But do you also say that sometimes people don't start something if they don't really understand the value in it? Like you something about social yeah, media, no, no, you understood the value. I agree with that. And so I you jumped in. I agree with that. But I mean, look, so, two, two thirds of all small businesses break even or lose money. Mm -hmm. uh, 22 million out of 28 million small businesses have no employees. Now, I, I know people, if you've ever heard me or watched me, or you've heard me throw those stats around before. Nobody's paying attention to what I'm saying right now. There's a reason I keep repeating this. Two thirds of all small businesses break even or lose money. Break even is not a category in any sport, right. okay? <laughs> Except in business. Right. Stupid. You don't start a business to break even. Uh, 22 million out of 28 million small businesses have no employees. Why? Why would you start a business and not have employees? I did this. I'm saying this because I did this. From 29 until 45, I had two or three employees, man. I wouldn't hire people. It kept me from growing, right? 
Why, why wouldn't you hire? Because, because I thought people cost money. You know, I hadn't studied. So what happened was my, my sales, I learned how to sell stuff. And then I, then I got a deal uh, uh, at the age of 29 to 32. Um, I started promoting this new way of selling things. I had this idea that I could teach people in the auto industry how to sell things in a different way. Shorter, not eight hours. Condense it down to 30 or 40 minutes, do it quick. I was way ahead of my time. So how, how, to, how to start using information, how to, be, how to be authentic and transparent in a car deal, not go back and forth to the manager. And I had right. this idea, I'm saying, I'm, I'm gonna change the car industry. It took me three years to get any kind of traction. I went from making 100 grand selling cars to like 30 grand, almost ran out of money. And when I finally figured out how to do it, uh, how, to, how to scale it, okay, I quit scaling. Because I was a sales guy, I hadn't become a businessman. Right. And I was terrified, dude. I was still thinking like a sales guy. A sales guy thinks like this. Uh, January was good, February was good, March was good. Is April good? Man, I sure hope April. I mean, every sales guy or gal has a God. Right. Sales God. Right. At the end of the month, they're like, God, please, God. They don't even believe in God. Please, God, <laughs> make sure I have a good month. Give me a lot of leads, right? Whatever. So I was still operating like a sales guy okay. as opposed to a businessman. And businesses must spend money on advertising. You have to spend money. All big businesses, study the big ones. They just throw money at advertising and marketing. Fast forward to today and to, and to integrate your question. Man, social media is free. Dude, it is the dream. Mm -hmm. It is the, it is the, the, the like, like. And the paid advertising is cheap. It, well, let, let's just start with the free marketing. Right. Okay. You show me free. How about this? Forget the free for a second and add this. Almost zero regulations. <laughs> it's like the Wild West. I mean, I can say anything I want. Literally almost do anything I want. Well, because people that do don't it have experience advertising yeah. in the traditional sense. Yeah. They don't even realize that there were a lot of things you couldn't do where you had to add little things or subtitles or at the end of the TV commercials, you have to say yeah. certain things. They don't realize that because they're, they're so unexposed to it. But for guys like you that understand that, you see the Internet as like a Wild West where you can, yeah, like well, you said. Well, well, I see the Internet as a connection to the entire planet. Right. As, a plot, as opposed to a market. You know, like a franchise guy in Tucson's like, I'm only, only going to focus on Tucson as a market. I'm like, no, man, that's a mistake, man. Dude, you... You want to make sure somebody sees your ad in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. Cause somebody in Tokyo today knows somebody in Tucson. You know? So so I I don't I want the I, I want the vibration. I want the I d I don't know where you're gonna come from. You know, I I, I don't know where you're looking at YouTube. Right. You could be on a plane. On a Delta Airlines flight. I was actually in New York when I saw your video. Yeah, you and you li you live in Arizona, right? So yeah. so I don't know where you're gonna be. Location is no longer a, a location. Right. So, so, look, if you have great content, a great idea, a great product, you, you are obligated. I believe that I'm obligated to go omnipresent so the world can pick me rather than some of these criminals right. or, 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 or terrible products that are being offered to people. I mean, this year, uh, in October, November, we used social media to raise $15 million. Uh, for my real estate transactions. We opened two funds. I've never done a fund before. I didn't tell anybody. We raised $15 million in 60 days. Both funds were oversubscribed and they were subscribed. Uh, the, the investments were eight times larger than the average fund that's ever opened in the United States. Oh. Now we're going to do a fund. We're opening a fund this week. It's 40 million. I think I'm going to fill it in 40 days. Okay. I haven't opened it yet and I've already filled 26 million of the 40 million simply going on Facebook saying I'm opening a fund. Right. Okay. There's been no ad. I haven't run an ad yet. So. Because you really built that following. You understand how to deliver content one, is a microphone. One, I haven't ripped anybody off in 30 years. A reputation is like, you might not like me, but nobody says I've ripped him off. People will say, I don't like him, he's arrogant, he's cocky, uh, whatever, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it, that's just part of the game. Right. So, so they don't like my delivery, I'm too aggressive, I'm too pushy, I market too much. I've whatever. actually, people that I, that I know know you, Cole Hatter, 
Yeah, yeah. And, and I saw Mark, Cole last night. Yeah, I just interviewed Cole last week. Yeah. And, um, you know, they, they all say the exact opposite of everything you just said. Totally genuine guy, yeah, yeah. honest guy, yeah. always working on doing the right thing, yeah, you know. Yeah. And even uh, this guy right here, as, as we were talking before you came back down, um, he's like, yeah, everything you see on, on the internet and TV, I mean, that's his personality, but yeah. he really, like, that's how he is, but he cares about people, and he, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And so kudos to you right there. I mean, I do care <laughs> about people, but, you know, and I'll punch you in the face, too. So, like, I, you know, any, I'll protect her. So I don't let I don't have people push me around. I, I, Damon John was here this weekend, and they were saying some stuff. I said, you guys, and I just just freaking dropped on them, right? And, and Damon looked at me and says, dude, you're like, you're like Donald Trump without all the baggage, <laughs> you know? And, and so, I, like, like, I'm at a place in my life where I have figured out how to be me, which is such an unbelievable, like, if I could wish anything for anybody, it would be like, man, be yourself. Like, like, figure out how to be yourself, not have to please the whole world so you can at least please you, and be successful doing it, that is like, it's a trifecta. So I'm gonna give you a total hypothetical situation because this can't really be done yeah, that yeah. we think of in yeah. real life. If you were to have to transport out of your body into another body that's not doesn't look like you, totally yeah. different name, yeah, yeah, so you yeah. can't use anything that you've built in the last five years. You yeah, have to yeah. start from scratch. Yeah, sure, sure. Nobody recognize you, all your contacts, your I friends. Wanna do, I wanna do this TV show right here. Yeah, is this, this a the TV show? show? Is this the show? This is a show. <laughs> Drop me off anywhere. I can't use my name. Right. Can't use your name. I can't say I wrote a book. Okay. Dude, you're talking about how I started my first business. Yeah. So I was how, 29 what, years what do you old. Do? Nobody knew me. I wouldn't use social media. Okay. I would not use social media. Not right away? No, no. I'd go knock on somebody's door. I would go back to my mantra. You, you know, know what so my mantra you, is? What's that? Who's got my money? <laughs> I'd be like, who's got my money? Look, I've been doing this since I was 20, 22 years old. I don't have any money. I need some money, man. It's just a basic, simple, caveman, like, who's got my money? See, see I, I, a, a retired baseball player, I'm not going to give you his name, but he says, man, when I heard you say that, it literally 20x my business. Because what you said was, I was complicating it. I got to do this meeting. I got to organize. Who's got your money, man? So I make a list. What I would do today is if I was transported to this other body, am I a man or a woman? You could be a man. Okay. Thank God. <laughs> so, so, man, I just wouldn't want to be a woman. It's just unfair. It's unfair. So, uh, black man, white man, Hispanic, uh, let's Asian. Say, let's say white man. Uh, and let's say. Are you prejudiced? Huh? Well, you're I'm just, I'm keeping it, I'm keeping it similar to you. I'm keeping it, I'm basically keeping it, all right, no, no, how about no. this? No, no, I'm a black, I'm black, 15 years old, no dad, inner city Baltimore, uh, and I hate school. Okay. Who's got my money? Okay. I'd work, I'd work street corners. Okay. I'd probably go beg. I'd probably go panhandle. I'd get my money right, man. I wouldn't be in ideas. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have ideas about business. I would get money period. I could do it with a Ouija. I'd go steal somebody's Ouija. I'd steal a Ouija from my neighbor, get a little bucket, help a brother out. <laughs> okay. And, 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 and I'd probably put on one side of it. Don't use the N word, which stands for no. Don't say <laughs> no to me. <laughs> okay. And I'd go sit on a street corner and I'd throw water on the windshields and I'd clean them off, man. And I'd say it's free. Or I do shoe shines for free, okay? Or I do a street corner, free entertainment if, if I was a musician. Free, man. Don't pay me, okay? I want to give everybody everything for free. This is how I started my first business. And, so, and then when is the turn in the money? People will always, people, good people will always want to give back. If you're talented, right? If you do a good job on that windshield, if you do a good job on my shoes. I was in the Chicago airport. And this guy, I was watching this guy do, I kept going through Chicago all the time, and I kept watching this shoe shine guy suffer. He had the sign, $20 for shoe shines. And every time I'd go back there, man, he'd have fewer and fewer people there. And I went and talked to him one day. I said, dude, what's the problem? People are cheap here. They're cheap. I said, no, bro. You got the wrong problem, dude. You're trying to sell shoe shines when people don't have time. You think they're cheap. 
but they don't have this. Right. Okay. So what I want you to do is take your sign down, say it's free, say it's a one minute shine and it costs nothing and watch what happens. Oh, that's stupid, man. I said, dude, you're broke. You need to take some advice from a rich guy. Okay. <laughs> free shine in one minute. Okay. And I guarantee you, watch what happens. Okay, first guy walks up to me, but I, I, I just marked it out, free, shine, one minute, right? First guy gives him 20 bucks. Get out of here. He was with the guy one minute. And what was he charging before? He wanted like 15 or 20 bucks or whatever the shine was, <laughs> right? But he couldn't get anybody to stop, right. not because of the price, but because of time. Right, so now you made it one minute, which is easy time. Everybody's got one minute. Free, low risk. Yeah. And now I feel like law of reciprocity. I got to give this guy something. I, I want to give back, great. right? I mean, sure, there's going to be some guy that walks through there and gets his free shine and walks away. Big deal. You got to, and again, that's why people have to go wide, right? You don't want, you never want to be dependent to every franchisee out there, owner, business owner. You never want to be dependent upon a, a, a narrow vertical, right? I want to go, I want to go out fishing where there's lots of opportunities. Right. When we rented this joint, I did not, this was not my only location. Okay, I need a lot of options, uh, even maybe other cities to go to, so that I get what I want. Now, the the fitness studio owners that we work with, gym owners, and now there's a lot of other small businesses watching too, which is really great. But let's take the fitness studio industry, right? You own a fitness studio. Let's let's pretend. Here's another hypothetical. Okay, you're not allowed to make money in any way ever, and ever again. It's illegal for you. You go to uh -huh. jail. It, unless you run a fitness studio, that's it. Okay, okay. And you can yeah, grow yeah, many yeah. fitness studios, you yeah, can grow as many yeah, as you want, yeah. but you gotta start with this one, Yeah. okay? And the biggest challenge is, uh, at least what the owner that you're taking over, right, the successor, you as successor, what he's telling you is, oh man, there's a lot of competition in the area, Yeah. okay? And people don't wanna pay good money to get in shape. Yeah. So how do you get that person to not wanna go to the competitors? and also find value in paying $180 a month for your system when they can go to Planet Fitness or LA Fitness for like 20 bucks a month. Yeah. So, you know, number one, I'd make a commitment to crush everybody around me. Okay. I wouldn't think about how am I gonna make money in this business. I'm thinking about how do I crush every player in this space? I'm gonna steal everything everyone has. So, I'll give you an example. <clears throat> First of all, I think there's a lot of money to be made in that space for people that are highly, highly committed, extremely aggressive, and that, that are willing to, willing to be ethical, but unfair. Okay. Okay? Like, like, I'm a very ethical person, but I am not fair. What do you mean by that? I, I, I want an unfair advantage. I look for every unfair advantage I can possibly get. So, I, I would make a list of the top one or two gym owners in that market <clears throat> and I would look at what I would make a list of I talk about this in a book called if you're not first you're last I would make a list of what they are unwilling to do what are they unwilling to do what are their holy grails you know I don't know what they are okay I, I, I don't in your business I don't know what they are like a barber business most of them are closed on Mondays I'd be open on Mondays Okay. Some of them are closed on Sundays or don't do child care. I would be open on Sundays. Might be open 24 hours. I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I would literally like... You look for the thing that they're not willing to do and you expose do, do they it. Deliver, you, do they deliver a product to home? Some do. Some don't. Uh -huh. but, so, you it. know, do they pay? Do, do, can, can the trainers there <clears throat> and the sales staff make really big money? Not really. Yeah. So I'm going I'm to look for everything that I can tweak. Look, look at Uber. What did Uber do? Uber did what taxi cabs wouldn't do. Right. Right? So they basically took a space and disrupted it on the problems. Right? So I, I would look at everything that has made that industry stodgy and slow and marginal. Yeah, that's what Elon Musk does really well. One yeah, of the things yeah. that he's, you know, one of the things that people say about Tesla is, well, what if you have to go cross country? That's very convenient you have to stop. So now instead of saying, all right, well, yeah, having a gas car might be better. How can we make the Tesla a better option? So now he's looking at starting at the major highways and putting magnetic strips in the dotted lines of the major highways. So it's charging your car while you drive, even at yeah, night. Yeah. So now you can grow across cross country without even stopping once and you end up with a full tank of gas. Yeah, yeah. Which wow. is 
okay, now you're, that's the one thing. Yeah, I mean, I think that that example is so, like, for me at least, you know, it's so like, whoa. Dude, I can't even think with it, right? Because I know that I'm, all, I'm, all I'm thinking about right now is the capital outlay. How's he going to fund that? Well, you know how he's going to fund it? He's going to go broke doing it. And he's going to go to investors and keep raising the money no matter what it takes. Why? Because he's committed. He's not committed to money, man. That dude's a freak. Yeah. Okay? And the, and the freaks and the beast. Like, I'm a beast. I'm, I, I, I'm a freak of nature. Do you go broke often? Huh? You go broke I go broke. I go broke once or twice a year. Really? I take all my money, shove it all into my deals. I go all in. See, all these guys that talk about diversify uh, in investing. If you go back and study the Carnegie's, uh, the Roosevelt's, the, uh, uh, not, not the Roosevelt's, the uh, Vanderbilt's, the Rothschild's. The men that built America. Dude, those guys went all in. They, they didn't diversify. Warren Buffett, he's not a diversifier. People are going to be like, oh, yeah, he does. He's got all this stuff. Warren Buffett went all in on his first deal until he like, okay, I own all of it. What do I got to do? I got to buy a second deal. He wasn't trying to diversify. He went all in. He shoved all in. These guys are making huge bets on single things, okay? So <clears throat> people, people, your audience is, the question I get all the time is like, where do I invest my money? Dude, you invest it back in your business. Right. You don't invest it in a stock on Wall Street you don't know anything about, right? Stay committed to your business, right? So <clears throat> I would look at that gym membership, the gym space, whatever it is, right? And I'd say, what are the players around me not willing to do? Who are the top two players? I don't want to compete with everybody else. I want to know what the top two players in that market are doing, and I want to take them out. And if you don't have that kind of ferocious, like, like barbaric, beast-like obsession, then you need to look at what happened to you. Because there right. was a period of time where we all had that. Pro probably as little babies. Right. You know, you come out of your mama's womb, man, you're not politically correct. Right. There's no governor. And they'll be persistent. <laughs> they'll be I, need, I need, right? And My I'm kids looking, are persistent. Exactly, dude. And then what happens, man? What happens to the, to, you know, you fast forward 20 years and, 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 and the kid can't even go ask for what he wants. Well, you have parents, you have teachers saying, don't ask again. Yeah, you yeah, ask again, yeah, this yeah. happens. Yeah, yeah. Stop it. Yeah. You know, and so little by little you learn. I think the first phase is you learn to ask like shy questions. So yeah. if your mom told you don't ask when dinner is ready again, you know, maybe instead of asking when dinner is ready, you may say, Hey, uh, what are you making for dinner? Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, just kind of a yeah. way to start swerving into it. Yeah, and then yeah. little by little, as you start going into adulthood where that's kind of how you do it, right? You see men asking their wives, they want to go, they want to go out with their friends on a weekend. Yeah. And instead of saying, like, hey, I'm gonna go out with my friends on the weekend, or is that cool? They'll just go right in. Hey, so do we have any plans this weekend? And they yeah, just go yeah. in all soft, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think little by little we've been grown to yeah. kind of work that way. Yeah. No, I, I agree. That slows you down, right? Mm -hmm. So, and that's gonna infiltrate into the business. And that goes back to your question about the gym, gym owner. Right. I'm, I, I, can only, I can only make money in the gym business. Right. Dude, who's got my money? It's gonna be my first question. Oh, Equinox has got it. 24 Hour Fitness has got it. What are they doing? What won't they do? I'm going to steal their clients. It's Alexander the Great, I'm 16 years old. I'm taking everything. Right. Attila the Hun time. Now, people that are making a lot of money, to some people, we grow up, and when I say we, I mean generally, people grow up, you watch movies of Disney and T, you know, all movies, the rich guy is the greedy guy, yep. the dumb guy, the jerk, and the broke guy is the one that somehow outsmarts him in the movie. The meek shall inherit the earth. Yeah. <laughs> so, Dude, let me just tell you guys this. If the meek inherit the earth, it'll be worth nothing. Okay, patience is a virtue. All right, well good. The guy that told you that was making moves while he was trying to convince you to be patient. It's all garbage. Okay? Money won't buy you happiness. Yeah, the guy that tells you money won't buy you happiness doesn't have any money. He has no expertise about money at all. And he's probably gonna be asking you for a loan in a second. So this is, this is garbage. It takes money to make money. It does not take money to make money, it takes courage. This is all misinformation, okay? Mm -hmm. We're actually doing a documentary right now based on this little book, The Millionaire Booklet, Why So Many People Don't Have Money. 
Okay. Why is it? How is it even possible? The question I'm asking is, how is it possible to live in a country where there's so much wealth and so few people have anything? Is it a scam, a conspiracy? Is it set up? Is it just the, the decks rigged? Or is it possible uh, that most of the people have the wrong data? Is it, is it, if knowledge is power, okay, and all these people, this 250 million people don't have anything, living in a place where there's abundance, is it possible that the information is just wrong? That, the, that yeah. the majority of the people have. So I know, I know the reason I have what I have today is because I am a contrarian. Like I, I live outside of the mass agreement of data. And I did it when I started my first business. I did it at 51 years old when I started using social media. I did it with investing in real estate throughout my career. Like all my plays have been kind of outside of traditional thinking. And, and so I'm gonna, what I'm doing in this documentary is I wanna, I wanna look at what, what is it you and I were taught and could that be part of the problem? Because if I go to some of my billionaire friends and I say, um, dude, is a house, it? do you consider a house a house an asset? They'll, every one of them will start laughing. Really? Every one of them will be like, of course not. Complete liability. Ba 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 based by definition, it's a liability because you got to keep feeding it. I got to keep feeding it. It doesn't feed me. Right. An asset is something that feeds you. A liability is something you have to feed. So um, if I ask the rich guy, hey, uh, should I, a billionaire, you think I should buy a plane, man? Oh, yeah, def definitely. He's the only one that's going to tell me that. My you, you have a jet. Yeah. My, 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 I, I go to my accountant. What do you think? Oh, no, 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 no. Terrible investment. You don't need that. <laughs> Lawyer. No, 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 no. You know, uh, even the aviation people, you don't use it enough to own one. You should just lease one. <clears throat> my rich buddies, I mean, the ones that got stupid money, FU money, yeah, dude, buy one. Shit, buy two of them, as long as you're going to use them. So, have, has it been an investment for you? Have you made your money back we, on we, it? We made, we made triple my money on that jet in the first year. Why? How, how was it made? Because, because that jet, I mean, I didn't have to buy my jet for that to work because of the way I work. Uh, I did five cities in one day on my plane. Okay, you can't, you can't do that. No. If you have ambassador status with American Airlines <laughs> right. and, and they roll a red carpet out for you, you're lucky if you make two cities. Right. I did five cities, seven meetings in one day. Time is money. Attention, money follows attention. Uh, I mean, the ultimate reason why we bought the jet was I wanted to walk on it. No, my stuff's there. My property's there. My, my weapons are on board. And you get a lot more done in a short amount of time. And I can, I can, I can buy time. I, can, I, can, I, I don't need to manage time anymore. I can create it, right? I was supposed to be here till the 7th. I got to deal with DJ Khaled on a ship. We're flying out tomorrow so I can be with him and Little Wayne and Future. Cool. Wow, that's cool. And, and, and so we can change our calendar. I can go be with DJ and, and those boys and I can expand my, 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 uh, you know, my, my, my footprint, right? My omnipresence, my awareness. Right. Uh, uh, Damon John's in Miami. My jet sitting at the freaking hangar. Uh, I don't know Damon. I know he missed a flight. Uh, I know, I know I'm, I'm, I'm watching things, right? I call up his agent. Hey, tell him I'll, I'll bring him to Vegas. I know he missed his flight. Wow. He hops on with me. Next thing you know, we're doing business together. Right. On the way home, we're going to Miami. There's a thousand unit deal. It's going to be a $107 million deal. I called the guy on the phone. I said, hey, I'll fly in, change my whole thing. I'm going to fly in tomorrow morning. Rather than going to Miami, I'm going to go to, I'm going to, go to Jacksonville. I'm going to see the dude, get on my plane, go to Miami, still make the meeting with Khaled, get on the cruise, have the plane pick me up in the Caribbean this weekend, bring me back to Miami and do another meeting on Saturday. So, um, man, time is money, baby. And while I'm doing that, dude, see, you, you said to me, what, last night? Hey, yeah. I'll be there tomorrow morning. Yep. I said, roll, let's roll. So time is money, man. We're creating time. Right. Oh, man. I, I and I appreciate you taking the time. 
everything that I've learned from you, I already kind of feel like I owe you money because I feel like uh, I only paid like 20 bucks for the book. Yeah. 20 bucks? <laughs> I think it was like 20, 25 bucks, something like that. Which book? Which book did you I got I got Obsessed or Be, a- be Obsessed be, or Be Average yeah, and I got yeah. the 10X rule. Yeah, okay. So I got those two. So I paid 25 bucks each. So I paid 50 bucks. Yeah. And I'm implementing stuff that yeah, I learned yeah, from yeah, your yeah, stuff. You yeah, know, yeah. And that's another thing too. I think people don't realize how much information is actually accessible to you yeah. for a low cost. Well, but just so people know that, like, like those books are not. I write those books. Those books are not written by ghostwriters. Uh, I don't think anybody could write my books for me. I understand why people use ghostwriters. I write those books to solve my problems. So, I, I, you know, I think that people really, like, I have a. The people that like me, dude, they'll 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 freaking die for me, and it, I don't think they're me and my wife talk about it all the time. I don't think they're fans of mine. I think they're fans of my information. They 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 had an experience with my information helping them. So this book, this is the book I should have written first. So let's we're gonna close out. Yeah, yeah. Talk to me about this right here and what the, value people are gonna be able to the, get out of that the, book. The, this book's about money. It's gonna show you seven steps that you can take that will literally change the way you look at money for the rest of your life. Okay. Okay. It's going to talk to you about when to save and when to invest. Okay. And, and it's going to blow your mind when you see it. It's okay. going to show you how to create multiple flows of income and how to never abandon the first one. Okay. And it's 42 pages long. You can read it in 18 minutes. I'll give it to everybody that's watching the show today. Okay. So go to millionairebooklet.com. I'll give you the book. Okay. And all I ask you to do is if you love it, buy one from me in the future and give it to somebody else. Okay. So we're, we're, we're on track to give a million of these away this year. I'm definitely excited to keep following and, and Dude, reading the book myself. Brother, You've been great. Come on, man. Not just now, but in all the stuff I've read from you, you helped me and my business a lot. And I'm excited that I now have the opportunity to share it with my audience. So. And GSD, if you're a kid like my little five-year-old, what do we tell her it's standing for? GSD. Get stuff done. My kids know what's get stuff done. Okay. But you guys know what it stands for. And uh, this guy lives it to the T. Yeah. And I'm so glad I got a chance to hang out with you. And, Dude, and I appreciate you coming in, man. So, Great job. Thanks again, man. Okay, thank Take you. care. Okay. Awesome. Awesome job, guys. Great job. Okay. What's up, guys? Yeah, that was great. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not kidding, man. I, I got so much value out of the books that I've read from you. Yeah, that's awesome. Even man. the talk from Thrive. If I didn't get to read any of your books, but I saw the talk at Thrive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, that was an awesome pitch. Yeah. You, you walked away from Thrive and said, oh, that was good. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was. That was good. Your perspective on stuff, man. It's inspiring. Thanks so much for joining us today. If you like this episode, then subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher, and to our YouTube channel to never miss an episode. You can get all the links by going to thegsdshow.com. Thanks, and see you next time.